Luis, you can nutritionally optimize your training success during recovery to support muscle and cardiovascular adaptations. What are your three best nutrition tips there for? I think my three tips would be variants on the same and that is don't treat it as a one size fits all approach. So the number one thing would be to individualise it to the specific session that you've done. You need to think about what you're recovering from, what is it you need to replace or um, restore and what are you trying to do with the next session? You know, how well fueled do you need to be? How well hydrated do you need to be? How well adapted do you need to be? The second thing would be to think about your big picture goals because sometimes you not, may not want to adapt the same to every session as the other. And you might want to think about your total energy goals. There's no point eating extra food for recovery if that's just going to mean weight gain. And then the third thing would be to think about periodizing it so that at some times of the week or some times of the season, you might be more strict about your recovery because it's important to recover for the next session, other times it's not so important. Refueling of muscle and liver um, energy stores is a key component um, during recovery after endurance exercise, especially if a person wants to compete or training again very soon. Um, what's the most practical way to achieve um, a fast recovery of the glycogen stores? Well, glycogen stores are all about eating carbohydrates. So starting early is really important because you don't really store glycogen until you've taken in carbohydrate. And setting yourself a target of about a gram of carbohydrate for your body mass per hour is a good idea. Um, we find generally people like to drink it because they're also trying to rehydrate and you don't have to chew and, and um, make so much effort. So having some liquids, um, Adding protein to that liquid is also good if you're wanting to try and get the maximum amount of glycogen from a smaller amount of carbohydrates. So putting all those nutrients together in a drink can be a really good way of refueling. What is the most effective nutritional recovery strategy um, after an intense exercise to avoid this linked type of uh, illness or infection? What's well, the million dollar question because getting sick is really a, a disaster for an athlete. Um, we try and tell our athletes to have carbohydrate both during and after the event because that seems to help the immune system and also trying to avoid being on energy restricted or very um, low calorie diets because that also is um, something that the immune system doesn't do well with. Apart from that, it's practicing all the other good hygiene issues of um, not sharing cups and mugs and towels and, and trying to um, you know, keep away from where the germs are. And sleep plays a very important role during recovery. Are there any specific nutritional strategies to enhance uh, sleep quality? Well, that's a really important question that we don't know all the good answers to. There are lots of things that people suggest, having a warm glass of milk before bed being both an old wife's tale as well as something that's got a little bit of research behind it. And there are other sort of um, nutrients or supplements that people promote. But I don't think there's enough clear evidence to suggest this is the perfect way of doing it. But I can think of some things that you wouldn't want to do from the nutritional side of things in terms of sleep quality. And what could it be, for example? Well, too much caffeine, and we're all different with our responses, but particularly having it later in the day can be a problem for some people. Having too much alcohol, it might make you feel sleepy, but the quality of your sleep isn't really good. And just having too much food and fluid before bed so that you're feeling uncomfortable. And in the case of fluid, even though you might be thinking it's great to rehydrate, if you have to get up three or four times in the toilet to have a bathroom stop, they'll, that's interfering with your sleep as well. So they're all things that you could try and be proactively not doing to get that better sleep.